something. Wait, is something wrong? Am I ill? We don't give out this kind of information over the phone, I'm afraid. Let's arrange a visit, shall we? Can you make it this afternoon? Sorry, can you repeat? I can't hear you very well. I said... I want to help you. Draw an X on the door and come to me. What? I want to take a closer look. I think you might actually have a chance. I have a good feeling about you. It's your voice I heard on the phone, isn't it? Who are you? As you can see, I'm a cat. I used to have a lovely warm home. But one day, Andrea got sick. She came to Burnhouse Lane. I followed her, and I stayed. Where else can I go? Who's Andrea? She was my friend, of course. A long time ago. We both died in that fire, but I simply refused to accept it. Why am I here? This is where the sick come to die. Where else would you be? Are you sick too? No. I shouldn't really be here. But cats never obey the rules. Instead, sometimes I try to help poor souls like you. Because I know how to cure your cancer. This rotten sickness slowly killing you from the inside I can give you a fresh start if you're willing to work for it of course there's no cure there's nothing they can do but there is something you can do Angie the cure's inside you you just need to reach in and find it. But it will not be given easily. You must prove something to me first. Prove it to yourself. I'll do it. Just tell me how. I'll give you five tasks. Complete them all, and you will live. First task is to bring an evil man here to Burnhouse Lane. You're going to meet him very soon. Don't let him lull you into a false sense of security, but make him follow you here instead. He won't come willingly, of course. So use the chalk you found to draw an X on the door. It'll take him straight to Burnhouse Lane if he walks through it. Here he will pay for his evil deeds. Go back now. A new day is coming. But... We'll meet again soon. But now, take the door. Go back. I believe old George will need your help. What? Get the hell out of my way, you stupid! As the wolf opened his jaws to swallow the lamb, 
he found there was already an even bigger wolf hidden inside the lair. The tables turn quickly if you're not careful. And when you live a wolf's life, you've got to know there is a price for each drop of blood that you spill. Sooner or later, you'll have to pay it. Thank you, Angeline. This is the man I wanted. Your first task is completed. It's time to end it. Unless... Well... You have his gun. And a first-hand experience of being his victim. Perhaps this kill belongs to you. I'll let you choose. I've done enough. He's on your side. Very well, then. done this to her? A psychopath called Walter Green, who lives in the woods, not far from the farm. Walter likes to trap people, hunt them down like animals, sometimes just to slowly watch them die, but mostly to skin them alive as a sacrifice to the devil. What do you want me to do? Find Sheila and get her out of there. But do it soon. The sun sets down fast this time of year. You only have till midnight. And at night, these woods are dark. Bird cat. You look bigger today. 
do I? Perhaps it's because I'm so proud of you. Two tasks completed already. Well done, Angeline. You're really doing it. Hmm. I suppose I am. Thanks. But why am I here again? That's how things work on Burnhouse Lane. Once you find it, you can never really leave it. Am I dead? Did I... choke to death coughing? Is that it? No. You're here because it's time for your third task. But I've only just finished the last one. You don't have a lot of time, Angie. You know that. Fine. What do you want me to do now? You must go to the nearby town of Honiton. There's a woman there named Mary Willis. She lives in a house on the far side of town, away from prying eyes. Once, she was on the front pages of all the local newspapers. Now, most have forgotten she even still exists. See, Mary used to be a nurse. A phlebotomist. One day her colleagues caught her stealing blood bags. She was secretly stashing them in the trunk of her car so she could take them home. Mary lost her job, but did not go to jail. Instead, she spent a couple of years on the psychiatric ward, treated for schizophrenia. Okay, but what's that got to do with me? You will enter Mary's house and spill a drop of blood into her meal. Then, you must make sure she consumes it. Why? Because blood is where your sickness lives. If you want to cure it, you must first share it with someone else. Someone horrible, like Mary. But won't that kill her? No, it's just part of the ritual. The only meaning it has is symbolic. How do I make her drink it, though? She loves all blood. She'll love yours, too. They call her Bloody Mary for a reason. You'll see. Now, go back before poor old George starves to death. But I... No. Quiet now. Listen. Be still. And let the darkness take you back into your... I was waiting for you, and I dozed off, I guess. You did take a long time getting here, to be fair. Yeah, well, it wasn't easy. But I'm here now. Yes, welcome. Did you really have to drag me down here? This place is... Hell. It's dark and it's warm. That's what cats like the most. Well, I'm not a cat. And I hate it. I did what you asked. Can I go home now? I... honestly thought you'd give up by now. But you are a persistent one. Four tasks completed. What can I say? Impressive. But you're not quite done yet. Sometimes I don't know if I should thank you or punch you. 
You wouldn't do that. I might look like a monster, but you know that deep down I'm just a cat. And cats are many things. But they're never evil. That's not what I heard. Really? And who's spreading these false rumors? Uh, the dog owners? Ah, yes. They would. But no one takes them seriously, do they? Listen, it's time for the final task. Are you ready for it? No, but give it to me anyway. Then listen carefully. You must tell someone the whole truth about yourself. The good and the bad. And all the dirt. Like you would to a best friend. If you had one, of course. But you can't hide anything. It won't work if you do. Why? What's the point of this? You must rid yourself of all this baggage. You people hold on to it for way too long. Fine. I'll just talk to Jenny. Mm, as long as you tell her everything and she listens to it, that should be just fine. But, wait. How will I know if I've told her everything? You'll know because once it's done, a man called Mr. Fox will arrive at the farm. Let him in. He'll be so hungry he could eat a horse. Offer him food, but never speak to him. Do you understand? You cannot say even a single word to Mr. Fox or... Well, just don't. He's very peculiar about it. At least I won't say the wrong thing for once. Once Mr. Fox is fed, he will go, and you will follow him to a place on the moors. He'll show you a spot where you must dig a hole and recover a treasure buried underground. With that in your possession, you will finally be able to remove the illness from your body. Oh, he will also require a drop of your blood, so don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, I got it, I think. Good. Go back now, get some rest. You're gonna need it. Richard! Go on, hop on his back. He won't bite. He's here to take you home. Was Mr. Fox really just a dream? Oh, what difference does it make? What matters now is that all your tasks are done. You got what you wanted. Well, almost. It'll all be over as soon as someone smokes that special cigarette of yours. Easy to say. I didn't know it would be like this. To be honest, I'm not even sure if I can do this. Take your time. But not too long. Soon the sickness will make you weak, and then... Well, let's just say that it would be such a shame to waste your gift after you worked so hard for it. Don't you think? You 
should have run while you could. I really hoped you wouldn't see the end of Burnhouse Lane. This last house. This smoldering fortress of death itself. It will be your grave. You're hurt. What happened to you? I tried to catch a little spider. Even as a present on your doorstep. But he was quick. He stunned me, poisoned me, and now I'm dying. Sorry. I really hoped I could spare you that one last fight. I'm going to kill that spider for you. I promise. You are. But I thought you were scared of spiders. After all the things I've been through, I'm not scared of anything anymore. You've been a good friend. Thank you. All of this would have been a lot harder without you. I couldn't really save you from the horrors of Burnhouse Lane. But I think I gave you a good enough reason to go on, didn't I? You did make me do some crazy shit, if that's what you mean. And here you are, standing tall, ready for your final fight. Why would you do all that for me? Does every act of kindness need a reason? I simply chose you, Angie, to love and protect. But why? There's nothing special about me. I'm not that brave or kind. I don't have a great sense of humor, the looks, or the wits. I'm not even a very good nurse, feeding poor George sandwiches every day and hardly caring for him at all. Don't you think there's someone more worthy out there waiting for an opportunity like this? I've never been a perfect cat, either. Fussing over food, sharpening my claws on things I shouldn't be touching. But none of that matters, Angie. It's something you people often forget about. True love is unconditional. And if I could, I'd take that magic cigarette out of your pocket and smoke it myself. But alas, cats can't smoke. Is there anything I can do? For me, no. But you can still save yourself. You went through hell to complete your tasks. You earned your prize. You found the box and the cigarette. So, use it. Don't let it go to waste. Keep on living. Isn't that what you wanted? It was wrong to sacrifice someone's life to save mine. Give it to someone evil. What right do I have to make such judgments? Then maybe someone old who's already at death's door. You cats really don't get us sometimes, do you? Goodbye, cat. I'll see you on the other side.